Hi, time for another installment in the Nixie Tube design video. Uh, we've received our PCBs from Elecro, so uh, we'll just take a quick look at this before we actually uh, assemble it. I got a 48 hour turnaround on these. I think they made it. I ordered them on the uh, first and they packed them on the uh, second. So I think they made them within 48 hours, but I don't think they actually shipped. Uh, within the 48 hours, so I'm not sure what the deal is. I think it was a day out or something like that. Anyway, they you know, they did reasonably well, I guess. And considering that it was like 50 bucks or something, and they sent me uh, five, but I actually got about seven, I think. So, uh, yeah, they just made a uh, few more. And this is larger than your average your little Arduino shield or something like that. What is it, like three times, two and a half times? The size of that so it's pretty darn good for the price there's no the board is not warped that's the camera on my that's the lens on my Tegato microscope at that particular uh, zoom level so it looks trust me it is actually square so let's go in and take a look at it the first thing is that yes I ordered red solder mask I got red solder mask I didn't order gold plate so that's why it's just solder um, coat and uh, there there are no stupid manufacturer markings on the silk screen or anything like that they haven't added their own code I don't think there was an option to disable that they just haven't done it and that's great I hate manufacturers who actually do that it's really freaking annoying well let's have a look at the silk screen first to my eye it doesn't look like it's a uh, dot matrix printed but of course it is or your most of your low-cost uh, services like that are and you can see the individual dots and it's quite good I don't know about the alignment on that it looks okay maybe that one doesn't slightly line up so maybe there's a slight offset on the uh, silk screen there but for a prototype board it's all uh, fine and dandy it's not a photo imageable solder mask which is the other uh, type uh, which is uh, usually a bit more you know you get it on your more expensive boards and uh, it's dot, not dot matrix printed you just see like the outlines like you would on the uh, traces so if we have a look at the solder mask expansion here I, I'm not going to go in there with my microscope and actually measure it and all that sort of stuff the uh, alignment of the solder mask is uh, pretty good around the pad there you could say there's a slight offset there but really no big uh, deal I can't remember what the solder mask expansion was that's uh, that's uh, certainly more than acceptable for a prototype no worries whatsoever but they haven't uh, expanded the solder mask so you get a, like a thin slither through there so they've done uh, that is fine and dandy let's have a look at some of the via holes shall we where uh, that's good alignment of the hole based on the annular ring around there it's almost perfect and it's always hard to see the plating inside holes, but uh, there it is. It does look uh, quite reasonable. Yeah, no worries whatsoever on that. That looks like very smooth and consistent, but yeah, like you'd have to do a uh, cross-sectional analysis. Of course, this is not a professional PCB. Usually, uh, the good manufacturers do send you a cross-sectional cut um, through the vias and stuff like that, so you can see the plate in uh, consistency but everything looks nice and clean there's no there's no dag there's no silk screen dags on there there's no you know contamination of the board or anything like that it looks quite good so I'm happy with that that is certainly a pass on the Elecro board no worries all right so let's start out by soldering what you're going to want to do here is always solder your low profile stuff first so all your surface mount stuff all your surface mount chips all your surface mount uh regulators and capacitors and all sorts of stuff other stuff these through hole ones uh don't put those in definitely don't put the sockets for the nixie tube why because you can lay your board flat on the bench like this and it doesn't you know it doesn't rock because you've got pins sticking out the bottom or anything like that a uh, big trap for young players you pretty you learn that uh, pretty quickly that it's just nicer to solder all the surface mount stuff first and also you can get in there with your iron of course uh, without these big components blocking access to pins and something like that and certainly uh, something like this where you've got a big you know, uh, axial resistor right next to a uh, SO type package here, you would definitely want to do the SO package first so you can get in there and wipe across the pins and solder um, those pins on the chip. So yeah, definitely do all SMDs first, golden rule. Just checking that my chip matches the footprint. Yep, very nice, because we did actually goof that in the uh, original layout and had to uh, redo it. I chose the uh, narrow uh, width SO package and this is the uh, seven and a half millimeter wide one. So that's spot on. Let's go. 
And we're going to be using lead-free stuff today. None of that lead rubbish. No, I am a lead fanboy. Arm um, solder. Anyway, it's important to use very fine stuff. I've got 0.38 millimeter stuff. You don't necessarily have to go this low, but anything under 0.5 millimeters is what you've got. It's got uh, five core flux, genuine multi-core brand, the uh, choice of champions, and uh, so we'll give it a go. So that means uh, the five core, of course, means it's actually got five cores of flux in there. If you got that under the microscope, you might be able to see it. And the good thing about the fine solder is that it allows you to feed in a small amount of solder onto the joint. You don't want too much. That causes too many issues with soldering. A lot of people wonder why their soldering sucks when other people do it so well. It's because you use fine solder. You control the amount of solder that you put onto the joint. And that's a big deal for surface mount stuff. You want the fine stuff, 0.5 millimeter or under, trust me. Next thing we're gonna need is some flux. I've got this old Electrolube uh, flux pen. I'm a big fan of the uh, flux pen. So we'll just put some flux on there like that. We'll put some more over the top in a sec, but you just want a layer, a base layer down like that so it's under the pin. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just tack down the corner pin. So we just wanna feed a bit of whoop, solder onto that pin there and then we can place it. So there we go. And we can do the pin on the other side as well like that. So the chip is held in place. So now we can do our drag soldering. So we just put a little bit more flux there and there just to coat the pins. You can never have too much flux. Okay, now what I've got on my JBC uh, iron here is a little well tip. You can see the little hole in the bottom. And there's actually, we can put some solder on that. Now normally you don't want to put solder onto your iron because you can see all the flux burning off there, right? That's normally a bad thing, but we've got additional flux on there. So it's going to be okay. And these well-based ones are designed for drag soldering like this because they uh, sort of drag the solder back out, and, like sort of suck it back out of the joint as you're putting it on. So it's uh, easier to control the amount of solder that goes onto the joint. Now I haven't actually used this one before, this tip. It's brand new and I haven't practiced with this. I think it's on the small side, but I'm going to give it a go. So this could end very badly. So we've got our solder on there. And we just want to literally drag it across like that. And that ended badly on the first couple of pins. But we can just get that off there, clean it up a bit. And we should find maybe that second last one hasn't got much on there. So we'll just... Add a bit more solder. You see how the solder just flowed onto there? That one's got a bit a bit too much. It's a bit how you're doing. But our well base tip will be able to suck that back out. But ordinarily, you know, once you get this right, then you just literally just one drag across should do the trick. And just to show you that you don't need one of those uh, well based tips, I've got my uh, huge, which is my general purpose uh, iron that I use pretty much for everything. Um, yeah, a big chisel is one of my big recommendations for uh, soldering, even for surface mount, believe it or not. So let's try and do drag soldering like this. Just put some uh, solder on there. I put some flux back on the pins, of course. I've tacked down the two corner pins. So I've got some solder on the bottom there. Probably should put a bit more, but let's, uh, let's give this a bell, shall we? See, drag it across like that. And Bob's your uncle. So a little bit of a dag in there. Yep, you don't need a well-based tip. And by the way, that ugly stuff you can see, that's just all gunk and flux residue. That'll uh, clean up in the wash. Geez, the alignment of that chip's a bit how you're doing, isn't it? Well, let's uh, not worry about that. Drag along and we can do this. I'm doing it a bit slower. You can do it fast, of course. Look at that, beautiful, well, you know, a couple of little solder dags in there, but you, know, you can tidy them up if you want, but generally you don't have to. They're not going to short out anything. And if you're not a fan of uh, drag soldering, that's all right. You don't have to do drag soldering. You've already seen me do this before. It's the, uh, I don't know whether or not it has an official name, but it's the dab method. And I, I rather like this because it's very controlled. You don't, you can't accidentally put any excess force on the pins really. And the solder just flows into each individual pin like that off the tip of the iron and just the right amount that you happen to need to do a nice fillet. It's not hard to do uh, good SMD soldering at all. So there's a the result of that dab method there and that is beautiful. Just enough solder to form a very nice fillet on those pads there. So let's do one in real time, shall we? 
put some flux down there. Put our uh, tin our pad there. Whack our chip on. Make sure you got it around the right way. You can use tweezers for this or do it by hand. It doesn't matter. Ah, oh, put a bit too much solder in on and solder on there. It's a bit how you're doing, isn't it? The alignment's not terrific on that, but we'll run with that. And then we'll uh, dab. There we go. And now we're ready. Oh, sorry. Just to make it easier, because these chips, especially older ones, they got oxide oxidization on the pins and everything. So that's what the flux is really good for. It just gets right through that rubbish. And uh, all right. And then we. I won't do drag. I'll just go. Dab, 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 dab. Look at this. Beautiful. Thing of beauty. Joy forever. I deliberately missed that one so because I knew the solder would wick down there. But there you go. We're getting there. We could do, once again we could save a few seconds by doing uh true. Ah <laughs> just I didn't I haven't got my fume extractor because it will uh cause too much noise here. So, but look at this, right? I'm using like what is it? That a two and a half millimeter tip or whatever. No worries. Beautiful. How long did that take? Anyone timing? Now, just a little tip. Uh, what I would do here, just to be more efficient, when you've got a lot of chips like this, um, is to sort of batch the process. So I've like gone and fluxed all of those pins, and then I've gone and uh, dabbed some solder on uh, to the corner pin there, and then I'll go put them in place so I'll get multiple chips go bang 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 and then I'll go drag solder the whole lot and it ends up being a little bit more efficient and quicker and of course if you don't have a uh, flux pen then you can always get in there and do it the old-fashioned way and use the multi-core inside your solder like that so just apply your iron down there and apply the solder to the joint this is where your 0.38 millimeter solder comes in real handy try doing that with uh one millimeter solder and see how you get on and something like this sot 223 i would uh get in there and once again solder the pin first just to put it in place so we put that in place and i don't have to use uh flux for this one doesn't matter because we can get in there with our individual well with our uh, whoop hello yep that's what you get when you look at the screen you don't get that three-dimensional uh view of what's happening there viewing the screen instead of viewing the object and then we go in and solder our tag thank you very much there we go nicely done and with surface mount passives, of course, you want to just dab one pad like that and whoop, dip it in place. Yes, it is the wrong size. I'm, I'm putting an 0603 on an 0805 pad, but meh, she'll be right. By the way, when you're trimming component legs, don't go in there flush like like completely flat with the board like that because you just put uh likely stress on the solder joint i haven't got much of a fillet on here but generally you just go in there and then just tilt it just a just a wee tad like that and bob's your uncle and it doesn't matter how good a digital microscope you have multi thousand dollar tagano one uh, uh nothing beats a good uh stereoscopic uh microscope like the mantis here you can get in there for visual inspection Fantastic, can't be beat. Now as for the Nixie tubes here, I'm not going to just solder them uh, straight in. That's a bad idea because these things are, uh, you know, you might want to replace them. Uh, they're fragile, etc, etc. So, you know, best thing to do is use these sockets. I just bought these on eBay. They are specifically designed for Nixie tube sockets. I Some Nixie tube store that sells all Nixie tube parts. Fantastic. They cost uh, a bugger all and uh, they've got two levels. Okay, there's our pin. You can either have like the thin pin go like that and just stop but i actually drilled the hole let's try it does it fit ah oh, beautiful look at that there's hardly any wiggle in that at all so i've got the drill size 
right? And so you can sit it in like that or you can leave it off like that. If you drill a smaller hole, it'll just stop there. But of course, then you're probably going to get a bit more wiggle on that. It's better to stick it straight in. So that's really very nice. So I'll just go around and solder all those in. Beauty. And just a little uh, trap for young players, by the way. If you've got a mat that is, um, uh, you know, that can easily burn, you shouldn't, um, you know, because this one is... Uh, a uh, one of these proper rubberized uh, ones designed for uh, taking heat on it. Of course, the heat will transfer these pins through these pins very easily when you actually go to solder them. Um, so you know the other end will instantly get almost as hot as what the uh, joint is. So just be careful that uh, anything under anything under the bottom doesn't burn. And of course, if you don't want the wretched things to fall out, you can just solder them under the top. Look at that. No worries. Check it out. It's starting to look pretty schmick, isn't it? Yep. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And behold, the completed module. Check it out. Isn't it beautiful? We've got our uh, Wemos D1 module on the back, our Pilo Poo high voltage uh, module. And yes, I have actually powered it up and it does do the business. But I've got to program the thing. So, yeah, I could power it up, but it doesn't display anything, but it regulates and everything's uh, hunky dory. It generates the 160 volts on the uh, tubes. Yes, I know that might have been a bit boring, but hopefully you uh, learned something. I added a bit in there on uh, SMD assembly and stuff like that, soldering. So, yeah, it's soldering a board together. It's just another part of the video, step by step for this thing. And yes, so we'll have to do a future video on powering that up, programming the module and uh, getting it working into its final application. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.